Hey all, welcome back to Cracking the Fang interview. Today we are going to be talking about this problem called longest common subsequence. Um, again, the problem is on lead code. The number is 1143 and it's a lead code medium. I've seen this problem being asked um, in multiple tech interviews. Um, the top companies that have asked this question are Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon. Uh, and I've also seen this asked at PayPal. Um, and this is a fundamental problem. Um, you know, um, what I mean by that is uh, the other problems we'll solve right after will kind of build up on this. Um, and the problem is asking us to identify the lo longest common subsequence, uh, which is also called LCS. So first of all, let's define what is a subsequence. If you watched my previous video, about uh, subset sum. I'll leave a link to the problem in the description down below. Please check it out if you haven't already. Uh, you can consider a subsequence uh, to be pretty much the same as a subset for our purposes. What I mean by that that is when we define the subset in programming, um, and I, I wanna emphasize uh, that it's in terms of programming, we said a subset of an array is, can be any array which has elements from the original array, but in the same order, right? So you, you'd you only have three after two, you cannot um, have this kind of a subset uh, where three is before two if it's not in the original array. Uh, and that makes sense. Uh, uh, so the definition of subset is actually that of a subsequence. Um, in in real life, outside of programming, a subset can violate this order property. But whenever you're writing code, uh, things usually happen in order because you'll be trading from uh, right to left or left to right. So the order is you know going to be implicit. That's why uh, for our purposes, uh, just to simplify uh, all the discussion for the problems we solve, a subset is equal to subsequence. And uh, when will this happen? When the order is, uh, is uh, valid with respect to the original question. All right, so if the idea of subsequence is clear, uh, what we are trying to do is uh, uh, find the longest common subsequence. We've been given two strings, uh, text one, text two. Uh, you can simply call it S1 and S2 if you wanna simplify. Uh, and let's solve this example. Uh, if you've been given A, B, C, D, E, and you have the other string A, C, E, the longest common subsequence is A is common, C is common, and E is common. So the answer is three. Again, note that these uh, commonalities are happening in order. It, it uh, This could not have been A, E, C. If this was the string with respect to this, the longest common subsequence would have been two. It could have been either A, E or A, C, but uh, uh, not like, uh, not like the previous example. So I'll solve another example before we dive right in. Uh, and the example is this one. If, uh, if I give you two strings, uh, where S1 is A, B, C, and S2 is A, B, C, uh, the longest common subsequence is actually the longest common substring here, which is three. And let's do another example, which is a little more complicated. If I make this up um, and I say A, E, X, Y, Z, and I say A, uh, Z, Y, the longest common subsequence will be A as a common subsequence. Uh, I can either pick Z. Uh, let's assume there's another, uh, you know, uh, character, another Z here just to sort of add some complexity to the example. Uh, I could pick Z or I could pick YZ. So the longest common subsequence is uh, AYZ, the answer is three. If you would be doing a greedy approach here, which is simply maximizing the local span, you would have picked AZ, which would have given you an answer too. But here you're trying to find a globally optimal solution 
um, right? So uh, to solve for globally optimal, you need to exhaust all possibilities. And this is very similar to the subset sum problem that we solved earlier. Uh, we are whenever we are asked anything which is a uh, number of ways or we are asked longest common or uh, is subset you should always think of uh, recursion that is how i'm i'm sort of thinking so there are many ways of solving this problem, but uh, if you think about it, uh, you need a global solution which works for the entire string. The only way you can get that global solution is by, uh, you know, exhausting all possible uh, options. Uh, and recursion is simply that. It's essentially solving all sub problems and finding you a globally optimal solution. And that is one of the reasons why, why it's so expensive and we later, um, as we discussed in the previous video, we optimize it uh, later using dynamic programming uh, to store solutions to our sub problems. All right, so let's start uh, writing the code. Uh, and I'm gonna uh, directly write the uh, memoized version here or, uh, or let me actually write the uh, simple recursion and then I will um, upgrade it uh, to a memoized code. I'll uh, leave some space for that. So I'll start with the recursive solution. And what I've been given is two strings, S1 and S2. And in the same simple example, it can be ABC and AC, right? Uh, we look at this and uh, write the code. So let's start by writing. Uh, we'll def start by defining our function, define longest common subsequence. Uh, we'll pass it to strings S1, S2. And we'll also have two pointers for each of those strings. So whenever you have a string and you're trying to do something, you need a pointer to work through the string. So I'll say I and J are my two pointers. Uh, so there could be a case here where, uh, you know, you, you have the string and um, um, you you essentially, uh, uh, you, you iterate through it, right? So you're, you could start from the uh, right side and um, uh, work towards the left. Uh, so for that, uh, the first case uh, is the base case as we, um, you know, usually do. Uh, it's going to be... If n is, I'm sorry, I'm going to call it i and j, and if I, base case, if i less than equal to 0, uh, less than, and j less than 0, what this means is you have fallen off the cliff you return, uh, sorry, I'm just gonna store it in a temp variable so that I can later uh, memoize this, but you could have a return here if you're writing a recursive solution exclusively, your result will be zero. Else if uh, you, uh, the index you're at uh, for i and j, uh, so s1 of i is exactly equal to s2 of j, your result is you essentially have a match. So it's it contributes to your subsequence. And um, so you have a match here and you're going to uh, move the pointer from uh, from this to the next index. So you'll essentially be evaluating a b against a. Um, so the way it will look, look like is s1 comma s2 comma i minus one and j minus one. I hope this makes sense. This is when you had a case where C matched and you're sort of just moving your um, uh, index towards the left. The other case can be when, um, you know, you don't have a match. So uh, I'm going to write this down, but you don't really need to. Now you can just simply say else. Uh, so I'll say else. And the case would mean uh, if your S1 is not equal to S2, meaning there's not a match. Um, there are two things you need to do here. Again, this is a comment. You need to have 
two results uh, where you will change the pointer for one of the strings and not change the pointer for another string. So if I have a, b and a, uh, there's not a match. So there are two cases. I'm going to compare a with a and I'm going to compare uh, a, b with an empty string because there could be a character here. Imagine there's a, a another a here. So, you know, compare a with a. So you need to consider both these options. I'm going to make this empty and do these comparisons, right? Uh, and this should be an OR. So if you finish with any of your strings, your result is going to be zero, not an AND. All right. So the idea is similar for the other case as we discussed. You're just moving the index of one of the strings. You remain, keep this as I. So, And the result is going to be a max. The reason this is a max is you're looking for longest common uh, substring. You're not just looking for one substring, you're looking for the uh, globally optimal solution, which can only happen with recursion since you're exploring all possibilities. And once you're done with this, you can simply return result. So how does the call stack look like? Um, that should be the very first question you, you know, you have once you write any piece of code, right? Um, so in this case, um, you'll start with ABC and AC. Um, the first, in the first case, you, you're just gonna call AB and A because he had a match. Uh, and from here, you will um, try AB with an empty string. You'll try uh, A with A. So as you see, the maximum number of branches you take is two. Uh, branch number one, branch number two. And the depth of this, uh, this call stack is going to be uh, at max length of both strings. So if the length of S1 is M, length of S2 is N, the, uh, the depth is going to be O of M plus N. So linear, uh, 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 sorry, I, I just want to call it M plus N, right? So what does this mean for the runtime? So the time complexity is usually for recursive uh, 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 code is usually exponential and it's of the form of branches to the depth, as we discussed, max branches to max depth, if you want to be more accurate. Uh, and we have two branches at max and the depth is some factor of n. So we are going to, this is exponential. Now, how do you make this uh, more like polynomial, uh, you know, something which is linear n plus m uh, or, or close to of n. Uh, as we discussed in our previous video, uh, the way we do that is using uh, memoization. And I will show you how to modify this existing piece of code uh, to memoize it. Uh, step one is identifying the state information of your uh, function. What variables are changing? The only variables are changing with every call here, as you see, are the indexes i and j. So this is your state. So what I'm going to do is uh, call this key and make this a string so I'm able to hash it. Right? And if uh, again, I'll also have a memo dictionary which stores my uh, solutions. If uh, key in memo return memo of key. The reason I made this a string is to make it hashable, by the way. And you see, uh, we uh, we did something smartly that I mentioned earlier was we stored all the results, the partial results in a uh, variable called result for every case, uh, case one, case two, case three. What we're simply going to do is store that every time we solve uh, the problem. So what this does for us is it creates a dictionary right where it stores solutions for each of the sub problem right and the number of values you can have in the dictionary uh, is the key right which is i uh, which is a function of i comma j i can have m values because the length of i is m j can have n values so there's going to be m 
times n number of states that you solve for. So the total amount of work you do in this case is going to be O of m times n, which is uh, polynomial. So we, we sort of approximated this, but um, this is the exact uh, time complexity. But to get this polynomial time complexity, you are trading it with space complexity because you're storing results, right? You're um, sort of storing results. Uh, so the space complexity is the total amount of storage um, uh, and it's the same. Uh, it's the total number of values you store. It's O of M into N. Awesome. I hope this made sense. Uh, thank you for watching yet another video from Cracking the Fang interviews. Uh, please like, um, uh, subscribe uh, to our channel for more exclusive content. Um, and leave a comment down below if you have any questions or any problems uh, you would like us to cover in our next videos. Um, thank you so much for your